Hi everybody, and welcome to episode number 14 of my Mana and Artifice playthrough. So, today we are going to be joining a faction to start with, and then... Well, actually, no, I'm first going to show you guys how to craft something, and then I'm going to start working on my faction joining stuff, because I've got all the materials gathered from last episode, and I'm going to do that very, very soon. However, first, I did want to show you guys one very important thing from... Uh, tier 2, you guys can't see that, but I'm going to pull that out of the way, uh, is the patches. Your ritual bags, or, uh, sorry, practitioner pouches, they are awesome for getting these bat these patches. So I'm going to craft this one here with four chests, a infused silk, and a motivender. vendor. And when you got those materials gathered up, you draw a square, and then you get a single, when, it, when it's done, you get a single practitioner's pouch of depth. depth not death, and uh, actually it'll I need to first grab the materials to create a uh, sewing needle, but you can then use a, I believe it's called a Vincium needle, needle, yeah, you need to craft a Vincium needle, so I guess I'll start working on that here, and here we go, you have the needle pattern, I'm going to have to take stuff off here first. And then pull out my rune smith hammer and then whack myself to get not whack myself whack that in order to get myself a needle oh and it turns out this only creates one and now that i've got a ventium needle i now need to add on some infused thread in order to craft stuff up and now that we have put some thread onto our needle we've got a sorceress sewing set and now we gotta slap on our bag and depth pouch and as you can see that happens then you right click and then, boom, we now have a practitioner's pouch, and if we open it, we have the pouch of depth, which means that we can now stack things above 64. So, I believe this capacity goes all the way up to, like, um, I believe it says four times the amount. So that's, like, lots of lots and lots of stuff. See, actually, I can double check in the book, actually. It increases the stack limit of items to four times their normal value. And then after we... Uh, I believe this may be available in this tier. After we advance a certain amount, we can then add a second depth pouch of the depth pouch level. No, not this. Not this. In here, the depth pouch too, which will make it so then everything could store up to 16 times its normal amount, which is a absolutely ridiculous amount of items. However, uh, we're not going to get to that point yet because I am pretty sure that is a tier 4 thing. However, I may be wrong. I can definitely check out the thing after we advance our tier. So, the tier advancement ritual, let's see, do I have my, yep, I do have my purified Ventium Dust. So, if we look over here, we have our Fey Quartz ritual. Now we activate it. And now we pull out our Chimerite Mana Weaver's Wand. And then it should take like 20 years, but it will allow us to summon a little fairy. And that fairy will allow us to join the Fae Quartz, which, among other things, will give us access to new items and abilities exclusive to that faction. So now that it's done, I'm gonna turn up the volume a little bit so then you guys can hear what go. <laughs> now there's a fairy here and she wants a moat of air. <laughs> now we're being levitated up into the sky. <sighs> oh. The lightsaber effect. Oh. She's vanished. Wait, we kept the mode of air, okay. Well, it says that we feel the warmth of summer on the side of your face and the chill of winter on the other. We have allied ourselves with fake Quartz, so we have now advanced here at number three. So among other things, uh, I should start gaining some experience. Yeah, in that corner up there. Again, and if we were to check out the Oculus, we now have a bunch of new tasks. Yep, a tier three cantrip, a tier three ritual, a construct with those types of parts, a spell of super high complexity. Eldritch 
orb, an artifact. Mm. Artifacts and starting an artifact is not that great. Uh, enchant item using the runic anvil. That is something I'm definitely going to do at some point. Find a stronghold. Open a mana weave cache. Oh. I know where that is at. One of those that I can't open is actually. I think. Perform a Sanctum Invocation Ritual and complete the structure. Uh, go super far away from World Spawn. Magic level 45. Go to the Nether. It marked Nether Fortress, but not going to the Nether. Okay. Uh, remove an enchant using the Disenchanter. That's new. Inscribe a rote spell to a glyph. Glyph. Staff, Velm, or Contra Caster Arm. Huh. It's summon the Wither. Um, I'm curious, what's this Disenchanter? The Disenchanter is a powerful workbench that lets us spend some experience in Elder and Power to remove an enchantment and put it onto a room, room where it can be put in onto another item. Oh, that is really good. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It just occurred to me, we can open that in weaving cache. Okay, this is actually like really good. Let's see, where is that mana weaving cache? Yes, the world spawn mana weaving cache. We can open it now because we have access to the middle symbol. It's no, it's like the hardest one to draw. Okay, I hate it. Yes! Okay, now we do that. And it's open. We get access to... That, 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 that's it? That's it? It's like the lamest, like, loot chest that you've made me wait all game to open. Like, what tier am I at this point? Like, tier 3? And I got like three Vintium. That was uh, a bit anticlimactic. Never mind, this was better when I didn't know what was in it. It's just. Ah, that's, that's kind of disappointing. However, I probably could make the Disenchanter at some point. Actually, might as well try doing it now. Okay, so we've got this Disenchanter thing. So I guess what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to, I suppose I can enchant my sword with, with, with whatever the tier 3 enchantment is here. Oh, knockback 2? That's, eh, hmm, that's half decent. I mean, I'd, I'd want to keep the sharpness on breaking, which actually is a good thing. Let's see, a projection room? A rune of projection. So we need to craft one of these, and then we can then slap the sword into here. Oh, I also need that type of stuff. Okay, then I suppose that I will need to take a look. Oh wait, yeah, no, never mind. I don't have those resources. Okay, so I suppose that I'll do that enchantment, this enchanting prep between episodes, so then we can do that on camera. However, that is a good thing to keep an eye out for, though. I've now got knockback, so... I suppose that I will have to deal with that in the meantime. This guy just really likes cows. So does the golem, okay. Actually, thinking of iron golems, how is the iron farm doing? See, obviously it's working right now because we got a uh, something going on in there. Uh, don't, I won't tell the iron golems if I know what it is. So that is that. There were some mysterious spells that the wizards had, the uh, minnowing wizard people. Yeah, that, that that's just what I'm working on over there. Let's see, where are these spells? Can I cast them now? Let's see, a blindness sigil. Well, that is not super, like, awesome. 
Okay, so this is one that we can't cast. So that means it's either tier 4 or tier 5. And this is a sigil gravity well. Yeah, the way that gravity well works is that when you're affected by it, so you guys can see I can jump right now. The gravity well makes it so you can't really jump. Okay, uh, those are not phenomenal spell components. Uh, those are definitely not worth... Let's see, how much do they cost here? Like... A stack each of the transmuted silver. That's just ridiculous. I'm now part of the Fae Court. Which actually, there are a few abilities involved with that. Most associated with this inscription table here. So, we have a bunch of new spells, such as being able to emanate energy. I thought that was emaciation. It's emanation. We can put down little sigils that deal with stuff when you step on them. We can summon stuff. We can smite stuff from the sky. We've got a wall as well. We've also got arcane damage. Wait a minute. I do yeah, our faction cannot craft a spell. I was like, hold up. Yeah. Let's see, other spells that we can craft. We can craft the Briarthorn Barrier, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Briarthorn Barrier, I'm pretty sure, is one of our things. As well as Decoy. Outer Flight is another faction's thing. Let's see, Grow is something that we are super good at. We can do it without spending the uh, bone meal. Let's see, recall. Wait. Is there a mark spell? Let's see. Wait. What's this what's this recall spell? Oh, okay, that's uh Oh wait, yeah, that's uh those guys spell. That's actually a really good one, but it's not one that we have access to. We could increase the range of spells. We can inflict weakness. But our thing... Actually, it would be easier to see in here. If we were to go under our sorcery. In tier 3. We have Confuse, Decoy, and Briarthorn Barrier. And then our magical artifacts. We managed to get all the way down tier 3 is to be able to make the Bracelet of Trickery, which is a form of... Oh, Water Sentry. Okay. Oh, wait. Sentries. Okay. I'll have to read about that. Sentries. So, these Sentries essentially each have a different effect. But what's it? A Seer Stone. Uh... Oh. Oh! This seems interesting. Uh, if only there was a secondary use for the Seer Stone to be used on constructs, because then you could uh, make it so, like, when a construct... Yeah, so the Seer Stone, the way that it works is that it's, uh, it's uh, a lodestar for the sentries. So it seems like you would then take a sentry if this guy were a sentry, set it down here. Yeah, so you set down the seer stone next to the sentry, and then that will focus what it targets, otherwise it will sit still and just be blasting everything. Okay then, let's see, and can we can craft the Eldrin Wellspring Prism. Oh, never mind, we need to get refraction lenses. Yeah, that's so interesting that this, uh, that it's giving us all the information on Eldrin Wellsprings right now. It, it did used to do that, however, there also wasn't really a use for Elden Wall Springs at earlier tiers, but now we've got two things that need them. Uh, that being this thing, and the fume filter that creates it. So I guess I'm going to need to create a few more of these things. Um, let's see, and if I were to just create different stuff with that one, I would lose all of my current Earth Elden Wall Spring energy, which actually, that's not very much, considering that Earth is the cheapest out of all of them. I don't think that'll be much of a problem. Yeah, there are lots of things that we gotta do here. I'm curious about the Disenchanter and this Rote Spell uh, scribing. Seems really interesting. But yeah, between episodes, I will gather the materials to uh, craft our artifact faction item. That being the Bracelet of Trickery. The way that it works is that you just sneak 
and you turn invisible, which is super useful in limited circumstances, but it is still useful. So I'll craft it up. Well, not craft it up. Gather the resources to craft it up. However, more importantly, the disenchanter. I will craft all the stuff needed for this, and it turns out, I guess I don't have enough experience anymore to do that. I can see it underneath that little experience bottle. However, it'll be fine. I'll try my best to get that done. As well as gathering materials to start building, because I want to try to build a thing around my blood altar, because I don't like it just sitting here, which I am actually going to continue creating more runes of the orb, because I want to summon the big meteors. And then I will also probably get to work on some better enchantments on the sword, because we're at the tier where we can start crafting enchantments. Wait, fireproof? Fireproof! It's for the item, though. You can, like, enchant stuff to not burn. Yeah, oh my gosh. There are so many things here. However, I don't really have the time to take care of those right now, because this video has probably been running for a while. I mean, I don't know. Unless it hasn't been. Which would be kind of awkward. But it's not. Right? Right? Yeah, psych. Uh, see you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And that you will have a very good day. I will see you guys around next week with some more content in here. Where I'm going to have to do a lot of off-camera grinding. Probably, actually, I do want to show you guys, I did actually find a amethyst shard earlier when mining. I was digging around. I don't remember how I found this. This probably looks super suspicious. I just, like, dug into it. But, oh. Ooh, okay. These look ready to harvest. Yeah, so I found one of these things, and I'm gonna be harvesting all of those amethyst buds, because I really like the look of tinted glass. It just is... Everyone can use tinted glass. It just is awesome. Either way, I hope you guys have a very good day, and I will see you guys around very soon. See ya.